All right, today we are going to talk about the Schaefer method of writing paragraphs. Make sure that you are either taking notes on paper or using a Google Doc. I would personally recommend a Google Doc um, that you title Schaefer method because this is something that we're going to be using pretty frequently throughout the year. Um, and it does help if you're able to color code things. So I think Google Docs would be the easiest way to do this. But if you prefer to take notes on paper, that is fine. Um, if at any point I'm going too fast, feel free to pause the video and uh, then resume when you have written down the information that you need. Okay, so the Schaefer method, uh, like I mentioned, is a way of writing paragraphs. It is a little bit formulaic in the sense that you have certain elements that you have to include every time, um, but it's a great starting point for writing paragraphs. And then as you master this, you can kind of start to um, add different elements to it and um, get a little more creative with your structure. But for right now, uh, as we're starting out, we really want to just make sure that we have this basic structure down. So um, again, like I mentioned, we're going to color code. So I do think it's best if you have a Google Doc open. We'll be using blue for topic sentences and concluding sentences, red for concrete details, and green for commentary sentences. OK, so the Schaefer method really breaks down our paragraph into these separate steps. The first step is the topic sentence. And if you think of a paragraph like a hamburger, the topic sentence is like the top bun. Uh, we abbreviate topic sentence TS. So in your feedback that I give you on Canvas, if I say that your TS needs to be stronger, that means that your topic sentence needs to be stronger. The TS is the first sentence of the paragraph, and it usually shows the main idea. So you want your topic sentence to be broad enough that the rest of the paragraph can relate back to it. Uh, you don't want your topic sentence to be a specific fact or a specific um, example, because then the rest of your paragraph doesn't really have anywhere to go. You want your topic sentence typically uh, to be something that's mildly controversial, um, something that you have to prove. So that doesn't mean like some crazy outlandish statement. It just means that you want it to be something that you have to demonstrate using evidence and supporting details in the rest of your paragraph. So it could be something as simple as you know, Spider-Man is the best Avenger or something, right? That's something that not everyone would agree with. Maybe some people would, some people wouldn't. Um, that's obviously kind of just a silly topic, but um, it's just, like I said, mildly controversial, something that you have to prove, um, not a statement of fact. Again, feel free to pause the video if you need to copy any of this down and then resume when you're ready to go on. So here's an example topic sentence. In the fairy tale, Cinderella, the main character feels mistreated. So again, this is mildly controversial. Some people might not see it that way. It's something that you can prove using evidence and details. Um, so this is what we're going to be trying to prove as we write this sample um, example paragraph during this presentation. If we just said something like, in the fairy tale, Cinderella, she has blonde hair, that's not a topic sentence because that's just a statement of fact, right? Like in the fairy tale, that's the color of her hair. There's nothing else that you can really say about that. So you want it to be something that you have to prove. Our next step is the concrete details. These are colored in red and they are abbreviated CD. So concrete details are the meat of the hamburger. You really can't have a hamburger without um, the meat itself, right, or whatever you're using um, as a meat substitute, but it's really like the main part of what you're doing. So the concrete details are really important for your paragraph. Uh, so CDs can be things like facts. They could be quotes. They could be examples from the text. They could be examples from your real life. Um, they can't be argued with, though. They're evidence that supports your point. So this is where you want to put all of those facts and all of those details that either you found from reading or you found in the text that we're reading or in, again, it could be your own personal life experience. Um, but it's something that's true and you can't argue with it. So while the topic sentence 
could be argued. Your concrete detail is supposed to be something that is factual, that supports what you're trying to say in your topic sentence. So for example, our topic sentence was that Cinderella feels mistreated. So our concrete detail is going to say, for example, Cinderella must do all of the cooking and cleaning for her family. So here we see a fact, right? If you've read the fairy tale or you've seen the Disney movie, um, Cinderella is forced to do all of the cooking and cleaning um, in her family. That's a fact. That happens. That it can't be argued. There's no other way to see that. So that's what you want your concrete detail to do. It should be something factual that you can't argue with. Next, for step three, you're going to want to add commentary. So commentary is going to be in green. And commentary is the extras on the hamburger. So all of the other stuff you put on it, um, ketchup, tomato, cheese, lettuce, whatever, they really add to the hamburger. And in the same way, your commentary sentences add to your paragraph. This is where you're going to put your analysis, interpretation, explanations, and insights into the text. Basically, what you want your commentary sentences to do is to explain in your own words how your concrete detail proves the statement in your topic sentence. So it all kind of builds on each other, just like a hamburger would, okay? Um, so for example, if our concrete detail was that Cinderella is forced to do all of the cooking and cleaning, and we're using that fact to try to prove that um, she... Okay, so we're using the fact that she did all of the cooking and cleaning to prove that she feels mistreated. So now we're going to explain how that fact proves that statement. So these chores keep her isolated and friendless. The stepmother is thus able to give Cinderella even more work, which prevents her from going to the ball. So again, we are using our own words here to explain, um, provide analysis of how our concrete detail proves our topic sentence. And again, pause any time that you need to to copy things down. Okay, finally we have our concluding sentence and our concluding sentence is also colored in blue and it's abbreviated CS. That is the bottom bun of the hamburger. And the CS basically wraps up the paragraph and it rephrases the main idea. Um, so you don't want to say the exact same thing that you said in the uh, topic sentence, but um, you want to somehow kind of state that same main idea. So for example, uh, an example concluding sentence, therefore Cinderella feels abused by the very people who are supposed to love her. So we aren't using the phrase mistreated again, but we are conveying the same idea that we would have conveyed um, in the topic sentence. So now that we have all four of these pieces, what do we do? So. What we're going to do is chunk the concrete details and commentary sentences together. We'll be using a ratio of one to two. So what that means is that for every one concrete detail that you have, you need to have two commentary sentences. So at a minimum, your paragraphs need to be five sentences long. One topic sentence, one concrete detail, two commentary sentences, and one concluding sentence. Now, you could always add in an additional chunk of concrete details and commentary sentences. So you could have topic sentence, concrete detail, two commentary sentences, another concrete detail, two commentary sentences, and then your concluding sentence, and so on. So you, it, you can include more than one concrete detail, but every time you do, you need to include those two commentary sentences directly after it. It always has to go in this order. A lot of times what we'll see is people put um, two or three concrete details all together and then try to lump like three to four or even more commentary sentences after that, you have to layer it. So it has to go concrete detail, then commentary sentences, then your new concrete detail, then more commentary sentences. You always have to have it sort of layered in that way. 
So again, one chunk is one concrete detail plus two commentary sentences. It looks like this in the example. For example, Cinderella must do all of the cooking and cleaning for her family. These chores keep her isolated and friendless. The stepmother is thus able to give Cinderella even more work, which prevents her from going to the ball. All right, so when you put it all together, you have a full paragraph. And you can see how even visually it kind of looks like a hamburger, right? You have the blue on the top and the bottom. So those are your topic sentence and your concluding sentence. You have the red in the middle. That's your concrete detail. And then you have your two commentary sentences. If you have any questions on Schaefer Method, um, please let me know either during our question and answer sessions or email. Um, this is something that we will be working on throughout the semester, so we don't expect that you will have it perfectly done the first time. Um, but when we write paragraphs, you will be using this method and you will be color coding them just like you see on the screen here. So again, this is a very important um, presentation, so make sure that you label your notes and put them somewhere where you can find them because we will be using this again very soon.